Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another edition of Mean Streets here on our FTN Network YouTube page on iTunes and Spotify. Chris Meany here with you. Appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me here today. Not a live show. I will have a live show for you guys on Friday where I will go over one and done fantasy football playoff rankings, strategy behind one and done, and best ball leagues. Going to hammer home picks against the spread some props, and some touchdown calls on Friday. And I'm sure we're going to have more news on Friday when it comes to certain key players, A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Mostert, still waiting to hear on uh, the status of some of these offensive players. But I wanted to come in here today with a little bit of a preview when it comes to Super Wild Card Weekend in the NFL, and it all gets underway on Saturday. So I'm going to run through my initial thoughts on every single playoff game this weekend, the six games, the three in the AFC and the NFC. And then on Friday, going to hammer home the picks. I will show you really which way I'm leaning here today with some of these games. As you see, the playoff matchups here are set. We've known for a couple days, the Niners and the Ravens holding down the one seeds in the NFC and the AFC. Both teams had the luxury of resting a lot of their players in week 18. The Steelers found a way to get in, and Mason Rudolph has changed the look of this offense, a team that really only averaged a measly 17 points per game and nearly 27 per game in the three contests with Mason Rudolph, who is atop the board in terms of like completion percentage and yards per attempt among the leaders. But again, of course, he's not qualified. It sounds like there's going to be some nasty weather in Buffalo, which I do believe benefits the Pittsburgh Steelers, but a big loss. The most important player in TJ Watt, not going to play in that game. We'll talk about it a little bit more here deeper in just a couple of minutes. The 6-3 matchup, Kansas City and Miami, a rematch of a game that we saw in Germany earlier and KC, although we're used to seeing them have a bye, definitely used to seeing them play at home in the playoffs. If they want to get to the Super Bowl, they are certainly going to have to play a game or two on the road. Uh, but Kansas City also had the luxury of resting their players last week. And Miami is limping into the playoffs literally with a ton of injuries up and down their lineup on both sides of the football. The 5-4 matchup gets us underway in Houston between the Browns and the Texans. These two teams played a couple weeks ago. Of course, CJ Stroud was not playing in that game. The Packers and the Cowboys, the 7-2 matchup in Dallas, who have been unbelievable at home over the past couple years, a 16-game winning streak in Dallas, but the Packers have won three straight. Jordan Love looks pretty good, uh, and they're running the football really well over the past couple weeks as well. Maybe the most appealing matchup of the week, a ton of storylines between the Lions and the Rams and Matthew Stafford facing his former team in Detroit, the first division since 1993. Detroit did have the luxury of resting some players last week, and they did not. Sounds like Sam Laporta isn't going to be able to play in this game. The Rams did rest a lot of their players apart from Puka Nakua, who had the record for the most catches receiving yards by a rookie wide receiver. He got that done in week 18. And then the 5-4 matchup, the Eagles and the Bucks. Philadelphia also limping into the playoffs. Losers of five of their last six atop top of the NFL world at 10-1 and one at one point. Now questions on whether they should even be favored as they have a matchup against Tampa Bay, and you see some of the lines. There's been a little bit of line movement. You can still get three and a half with the Rams, but a lot of money coming in as a public dog here for the Los Angeles Rams. C3, still some two and a halves with the Eagles, still awaiting word on A.J. Brown and the results of his MRI as he suffered a knee injury. Of course, at MetLife Stadium, another one bites the dust uh, in New York. Whew, or Jersey, I suppose. And then the largest spread of the week, the Steelers, 10-point dogs against Buffalo. And I mentioned the weather there in that game as well. From a total standpoint, uh, the highest, of course, no real surprise, the Los Angeles Rams and the Detroit Lions at 51 and a half. The Packers and the Cowboys at 50. 36 is the number in Buffalo between the Steelers and the Bills. And that could just get a little bit lower as we creep closer to kickoff. Uh, this weekend, Kansas City and Miami, the Peacock game. All the Swifties going to be purchasing and tuning in live, I would imagine. Uh, frigid temperatures, and we'll talk about uh, Tua's numbers and frigid temperatures in just a little bit. But it, it is looking like maybe one of the coldest playoff games in the history could get below zero. Uh, again, it's early. It's Wednesday, but it's sounding like 10 degrees 
or colder uh, by kickoff Saturday evening at Arrowhead and then Cleveland in Houston there as well. So I want to just go over a, a couple of uh, thoughts with every game. And again, on Friday, I'll be with you guys live. I plan on going live at 11 a.m. Eastern. Hopefully we hear some news about a, a couple of players and we'll dive into the matchups uh, maybe a little bit deeper, but for the most part, you're going to get a good feel of who I like. I'm going to share my playoff bracket, have picks against the spread, some totals, uh, a parlay, a teaser like we normally do on Friday's episodes. We have some props. I already have a handful inside the tracker over at ftnbets.com. There's a few there. If you have a a subscription with us, then you are well aware. We have the Discord channel. We're talking about all these plays, projections, and tools. And we had the NFL betting show, which you can see on our FTN Network YouTube page as well with myself, Abby Labar, and Sam Schrudery. We rolled through all the matchups as well. So here today, let's start in the AFC. We have the, excuse me, the 5-4 matchup. So let's take a look at the 5-4 matchup. Cleveland and Houston in Houston. The Browns checking in as two and a half point favorites. It's a week 16 rematch where we saw Joe Flacco light up the Texans secondary to the tune of 368 yards and three touchdowns. Amari Cooper cashed in for 265 yards, 11 catches and two touchdowns on 15 targets. David Njoku had six grabs and a touchdown in the 36 to 22 win. Keep in mind, it was 36 to seven for Cleveland in the fourth quarter before some garbage time points by the Texans. Also something to keep in mind, and this is very important. CJ Stroud did not play in that game. It's tough to beat a team twice in a two to three week span. CJ is definitely ready for the moment. That guy's a baller. But the Browns' defense, absolutely legit. Cleveland out a league low, 270 yards, 162 passing yards, 5.9 yards per attempt, and a 57% completion rate against opposing quarterbacks. On the flip side, the Texans ranked 23rd in passing yards allowed, and their 7.7 yards per attempt was the third worst mark in football. Flacco, an impressive 13 passing touchdowns in his last five games, and he'd been feeding his two weapons in Cooper and Njoku. Cooper has over 400 yards and three touchdowns in his last three games. Njoku has top 90 receiving yards in three of his last five, and he has four touchdowns over that span. I think the Browns' defense will do enough to pull off a road victory. The playoff experience that Joe Flacco brings to the table, he has over 10 games of playoff experience on the road alone, a former Super Bowl winner. I think the Browns' defense will be enough to limit C.J. Stroud. Let me know what you think in the comments. The next matchup here, let's go to Kansas City. Let's take a look at the 6-3 matchup as the Chiefs enter as four-point favorites against the Dolphins. A week nine rematch that saw the Chiefs handle Miami in Germany 21-14. Both quarterbacks were held under 200 passing yards in that game. Travis Kelsey only had 13 yards. Tyreek Hill was limited to 62 receiving yards. It's decent for an average wide receiver, but his fourth lowest showing of the year. He'll need to show up in a big way against his former team, but it won't be easy in frigid temperatures at Arrowhead to a is 0-4 in games where the temperature is 45 degrees or colder. We could see 10 degrees at kickoff in KC. Miami, explosive all year on offense. We know this. They're ranked first or second in points, yards, passing yards, and yards per attempt. However, KC allowed the second fewest points and yards, the fourth fewest passing yards, and the third fewest yards per attempt. They also ranked second in sacks, and only three teams allowed more passing touchdowns then Kansas City. Mahomes and company have struggled on offense this season, but their defense will do enough to edge Miami, a team without their top pass rushers. Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, linebacker Andrew Van Ginkle, all out of this game. Jerome Baker as well. That's their top three pass rushers on top of questions surrounding Jalen Waddell and Raheem Mostert's availability. Let me know if you guys think the Miami Dolphins can pull off the upset. I don't think it's going to happen. The next matchup here, we will stick inside the AFC and we'll take a look at the Buffalo Bills and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The 7-2 matchup in the AFC features the largest spread of wildcard weekend as the Bills enter as 10-point favorites. Buffalo, they've been playing must-win football since week 14 and a win is all they've done. It's all they've done over the past few weeks is win football games. They enter a perfect 5-0 and over their last five games with wins over KC, Dallas, and Miami. Josh Allen, though, has been held to one or zero passing touchdowns in four of his last five, but they've had more of a balanced attack on offense with James Cook since Joe Brady took over as the offensive coordinator. Now the defense is playing well. The Bills ranked 23rd in DVOA defense through 
the first 10 weeks of the season, according to FTNFantasy.com. But from week 11 to 18, they ranked third in DVOA defense on top of being a top five DVOA offense for the entire season. The Bills ranked top eight in points, yards, passing yards, yards per attempt, and rushing yards. The Steelers are in the top half of the league in rushing, and that's about it. Both teams have a top 10 scoring defense, but Pittsburgh will be without their most important player this weekend in TJ Watt. Pittsburgh 69, 33 and two with Watt and an ugly one and 10 without him. They've allowed 19 points per game with him on the field and 25.8 with him off of the field. The only question is, can the Steelers cover the spread? I think if the weather remains sloppy, they can slow this thing down a little bit, maybe limit Josh Allen with his arm and they can keep this thing close but I like the Bills to win the game and make some noise in the playoffs. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let's head on over to the NFC, and we'll start here with the 7-2 matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys, 7.5 favorites at home, and home is the kicker. Credit to Jordan Love and the Packers. With an average team age of 25, they're the youngest team in the playoffs, and they found a way to get in after winning three straight and six of eight down the stretch. They rank in the top half in points, yards, passing yards, yards per attempt, and rushing yards. They've racked up about 150 rushing yards per game over their last three. Maybe that's how they can keep this thing close in Dallas, run the rock and a Cowboys team that does tend to give up a few rushing yards per game. But they have the edge, Dallas, that is, in every single statistical category on offense and defense when it comes to the Packers. They enter the playoffs as the league's number one scoring offense at 29.9 points per game. They're a perfect 8-0 at home, where they average 38.4 points per game and just 15.9 points against. In fact, the boys have won 16 straight games at home, and it doesn't seem like anybody can stop CeeDee Lamb, who has 12 touchdowns in his last 11 games and over 400 yards receiving over his last three. Dallas always makes their fan base sweat things out. I do believe that'll happen again this weekend with the Cowboys offense playing pretty good. And also maybe the coaching edge in Green Bay as well. Let me know if you guys think Green Bay will hang with the Cowboys, or do you think Dallas will cover the seven and a half? Keep thinking... Ooh, what was that? Keeping things inside the NFC, we'll take a look at maybe the game of the week, a potential shootout with no shortage of storylines. A 6-3 matchup inside the NFC features the Los Angeles Rams and the Detroit Lions with the Lions checking in as three and a half point favorites. Matthew Stafford in Detroit against his former team, division champs for the first time since 1993. Sean McVay against Jared Goff, the guy he traded away because he couldn't win the big game. Well, you know, he did get a guy that could win the big game more in Stafford in a little bit. But the Lions, they were great on offense. They finished fifth in points, third in yards, second in passing yards, fifth in rushing yards. But the Rams weren't too far behind, and they've been red hot. A league best seven and one in their last eight. The only loss over that span to Baltimore in Baltimore against the Ravens in overtime. Stafford, 15 touchdowns and three picks over his last six games. Looking great against the Ravens, against Cleveland, two of the top defenses in all of football. And Detroit has been among the best in the league at stopping the run, so maybe they can limit this weapon in Kyron Williams, who's been awesome this season. But they've been awful against the pass. They ranked 23rd in points allowed, 27th in passing yards and passing touchdowns allowed. Only the Cincinnati Bengals have allowed more yards per attempt than Detroit this season. They struggle on deep passes and in the middle of the field. Now they have to deal with Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. I love Dan Campbell, but sometimes you have to learn to lose before you learn to win. Will he regret playing Sam Laporta in week 18? Eileen Stafford, McVay, the experience. The Rams just a couple years removed from winning a Super Bowl. This LA team may just make a run, and you can still get them at 40-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. If you are with me on the Rams pulling up the upset, smash a like button, give me a heart, and let me know in the comments what you think the score will be. The final matchup of the playoffs may be the toughest one to call. It's the 4-5 matchup in Tampa Bay against the reigning NFC champion, Philadelphia Eagles, who have looked anything but champs. The Eagles enter as three-point favorites. This is a week three matchup that saw the Eagles take care of the Bucs 25-11. But oh boy, a lot has changed since then. Once 
10 and one atop the NFL standings. Philly has lost five of their last six, which includes losses to the Cardinals and the Giants, where they coughed up nearly 900 yards of offense from week one to 10. No team allowed fewer rushing yards than the Eagles at 66 per game. But since week 11, they've coughed up 150 yards per game on the ground. That's the second most in football. They rank 30th in points allowed, 26th in yards allowed, 31st in passing yards allowed. Only Washington coughed up more passing touchdowns than the birds this season. Tampa has a bottom 10 offense in terms of points and yards. They finished dead last in rushing yards. They can only manage three field goals in a must win situation against Carolina in week 18. There's no question. The Eagles have the more talented roster, but can Jalen hurts and Philly just flip the switch and make a run. It seems to be unlikely. There's a disconnect on offense, especially inside the red zone. They've been one of the worst defensive units in the entire season. How healthy is Jalen, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith? The Bucs seem primed to pull off an upset at home. Are you backing the Eagles? Can they get back on track? Or are you taking the Bucs at home against the Birds? Let me know in the comments. So that's the thinking that I have with these matchups, these six matchups. Still a little bit uncertain of which way I'm going to go when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I am leaning with Tampa. Uh, you guys are well aware I've been riding uh, the opposing team against the Eagles over the past few weeks. Some large spreads. You know, we had the San Fran one. We were in on Seattle. And we've, we've been in the past three weeks on the Giants twice and the Cardinals. There's a lot going on in Philadelphia. There, there really is. Um, the play calling is not great. They switched to Matt Patricia with a few weeks to go in the season. That looks like a mistake. There seems to be some confusion on defense with some of the play calling and uh, some of the players receiving some of the, the the plays and the coverages. I just don't think the scheme's right on either side. Uh, the personnel is there, but it doesn't seem like the, this team is, if they squeak out a victory against Tampa Bay, uh, I, I believe they'll be in tough against the Dallas Cowboys or the San Francisco 49ers, whatever way uh, it is. But as of right now, we take a look at the matchups uh, picks. I already have locked in Cleveland. I want to take them on the money line. I got them two and a half here. I like Kansas city by four. Uh, I, and I do like the Rams. Uh, the plus three and a half is, is my favorite pick of the week. Uh, but I do think that they can go into Detroit and pull off the upset. We're going to get out of here, guys, but I know some people have asked me about one and done and other things. We will have an episode on Friday. I'll present my one and done lineup that I am playing in the Sirius XM Fantasy League, and I'll have, you know, answer any questions that you guys do have, lock in some props, some picks against the spread, and some touchdowns as well. Uh, good luck. We still have a couple days away to think about some of these things. I will show you my playoff bracket, but I really want to hear from you guys. That's why I did this show this way. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Smash the like button if you can. Rate, review, and subscribe. Let me know who your team is. Uh, let me know Final Four. Final Four and who you think is going to play in the Super Bowl. And uh, hopefully we can provide some winners in a couple of days for some people. So have a good one. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.